Matisse was named a team captain and has obviously been an important piece to this defense. Uh, you know, what does he bring to the defense from a leadership standpoint? And I guess how does it make you feel as his coach to know that he was voted as a team captain? I'm very proud of him. Um, it's cool that a guy can come in here and be in the program for, you know, two years and, and do what he's done and get the clout that he has. Um, and he does, he's not a verbal a huge verbal guy. He's not. He's not a quiet guy by any means. But he's not the the loudest guy on the on the roster. He he's just the guy that's going to do his business every day. He shows up every day in the weight room and grinds. He, he works his butt off in practice. Never has a sense of entitlement. Never has, um, you know, works like he's still trying to earn stuff all the time. And players see that, you know, and players try to emulate that. And that's how good culture gets started by getting guys like that in the program. How good is this group of safeties? Very talented. I guess it remains to be seen. We got to do it on Saturday, but we've got uh, we've got incredible speed. Um, very football smart kids. Great personalities. Great. Uh, not that that always translates, but it does. You know, I think when I say that, I mean I think they can handle adversity. They can handle hard coaching. They can handle um, good times. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to to unleash the crew. With Tulane playing tonight. Do you guys sit down and watch any of that game before Saturday, or do you postpone all that stuff? I'm sure, I'll see week? plenty of it next week. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, it is kind of nice to watch game flow, you know, and see how things are looking from a tempo, stuff that you don't always see on the on the All-22 film. Um, but I, I do kind of want to keep my mind. I always, I'm always cautious about that. And Friday night, I, I don't mind watching a game, but I don't try to get too involved in it, looking at what they're doing or, you know, how they're doing it. I just uh, – I got my own problems, so we'll worry about that on Sunday. How, how much further along is Austin Remain compared to any time last year? Night and day, unbelievable night and day. Yeah, from a uh, body is better, but confidence is where he he needed it. You know, he came in uh, the spring early as an early enrollee, so uh, but he had a hand injury, and so I, you know he he didn't do a ton that first spring. Last fall, he kind of got thrust into a role that maybe he wasn't ready for. Again, not maybe physically, but mentally. And so he, it worked all right for a few weeks. And then the grind of college football caught up to him. And, and uh, I don't think it's going to catch up to him this year. I think he's in a, you know, the way he walks, talks, acts, uh, he's like a veteran guy. And it's, it's cool to see him leading out there. UT Martin returns their quarterback from last year. And I think that's probably a little bit more unique at the FCS level nowadays. <laughs> what did you see from him on film and what challenges does he present as an experienced I think quarterback? he's a really good player. You know, I think he, um, I think he can give you a little bit of trouble with his mobility. Um, you know, at first glance, you, you know, you wouldn't say that he's just, you know, we see Avery Johnson every day. You wouldn't say he's that, but, uh, but he's, he's longer. So I think he is moving faster. You know, it, people have a hard time with him in the open field. I think he really has a good grasp of what they're doing offensively. And, um, you know, along with him is a veteran group of receivers that he's worked with and skill guys and, and for that matter, interior linemen. You know, and that's the uh, – you bet continuity is one of the bigger things that, that uh, is, is, brings a good football team up, and, and they have a ton of it on the offensive side. What has Damian Lalio done to elevate himself? I think uh, similar to Marquise, you know, just uh, uh, his leadership, what he does, how he attacks each drill, each day, each meeting – um, you know, I was up here July, I don't know, I'm going to make up a date, but it was, you know, right after the 4th of July, July 9th, and I was walking around upstairs, and, and I heard voices, and I went in, and he had all the nose tackles up there meeting, you know, and he was on the board with a pen, and I, mean, I thought that was just really cool, and um, I think he's got the attention of a lot of our players just because of who he is uh, uh, and, and how he goes about his business on an everyday basis. Defensive tackles with him and Uso, who have played and you know have emerged. How much does that help this defense? Yeah, that's, this year? We didn't have that maybe last year. Uh, at this time, we were still had a lot of questions about both of them. You know, um, Uso we thought had a bunch of physical ability, but he had, had been injured a little bit in fall camp last year and you know, battled some of that throughout the year. Now he's healthy, and you know Damien hadn't really proven himself yet. You know. Uh, Damien's claim to fame to that point was he was in on the, the last play of the Big 12 championship, and it was the only play he played that day. And um, so that's, um, you know, we just feel much more confident about, you know, how they're going to handle the ebbs and flows of week-to-week of -week stuff. Seriously, what did, what did that one play show you about that kid? That the moment wasn't going to be too big for him. 
you know, that uh, he went in there. That's just, yeah, that's his personality, just so calm. He's never going to be a yeller, screamer guy. He's just a, he's just who he is. And, and I think that's what makes our program a little bit unique is there's not a lot of posturing going on. There's the guys that are just who they are, and, and we all kind of blend together and make us, that's what makes us special. Most improved player or position group since day one at camp? Wow, good question. Um, you know, um, there's so much competition in the defensive end room. It's hard for me to say that's the most improved. Uh, I think we've, I think we feel a lot better right now about our corner situation than we probably uh, did. I knew, you know, Justice James had played a little bit. Uh, Jordan Dunbar had played at, at another institution. Um, Donovan McIntosh was new. You know, we, we, you know, we had some questions about the depth there. I think we feel felt good about our first two, but you know, who could be three, four, five? And I think we've got three, four, five, and and I think we're not afraid to roll those guys in any moment. How has uh, Asa Newsom looked coming back from injury? He's uh, he, he's been good. He, he's you know he does some things uh, incredibly violently and quickly. Um, he's just a tremendous athlete. I mean, he's a he could be a track athlete here. I mean, that's he's that he's that kind of athlete, and he just um, you know he he's. Um, I thought early in camp maybe there was a little bit of trepidation with him, you know, changing direction and stuff. But as that got into, hey, we're playing football now, I, I saw that kind of wear away. And so um, he's he's going to be he's going to be a, a good one, I think. As as the season gets on, he's going to get better and better. With as talented as, as the young guys are in the <laughs> linebacker room, and obviously bringing Austin back and everything that he does, how much is is, is kind of Des? Under the radar. See, that that does is the one now that that doesn't get enough credit for what he does. I don't want to blow his head up, but he's, um, I mean, he's absolutely steady Eddie, and he is uh, not afraid to speak up. You know, people talk about the great leadership that Austin Moore has, and he does. Uh, Des is equally so. You know, Des will do it in, a, in probably a little bit more confrontational of a way, which is which is needed sometimes. And um, but the athleticism that he has, we're going to use him. Uh, as as a mic backer in some of our other sub personnel groups, so Des is learning, you know, all three linebacker spots to some degree, and so he's, uh, yeah, he's a rock star. He's a very very valuable piece to what we do. We've seen some of these FCS FBS games sort of come down to the wire in recent years. What does that say about, I guess, the talent that the FCS has the nowadays? There. That those games are becoming a lot more closer than they're, yeah. I guess, supposed to be. Yeah, I don't know. I wish you wouldn't say it that way. Uh, no, it's out there. I mean, that's, uh, and I've been on the other end of it, of course, um, at North Dakota State. And so I, I just, uh, you know, what what people don't get about that sometimes is that for those FCS programs, that's an awesome opportunity to come into Bill Snyder Stadium and, and get to play in front of this crowd and. Um, that's something that you've been looking forward to since the schedule came out. And sometimes um, I, I would guess that FBS programs don't feel the same way. You know, oh, man, okay, you know, we're out there. I, I don't think our guys take that lightly. I think our guys, uh, it doesn't matter who the opponent is, if it's Tennessee Martin or if it's Tennessee, I think our guys are going to come out the same way and, and play. So um, hopefully we can just uh, roll out there and see uh, who executes better and, and who makes plays.